some of the decisions on this project are really questionable. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome finally to, finally to what I think will be the last video on this project. Um, it's been four very long years and I guess three videos on this project. So maybe I should make one more just so it's like a video per year. <laughs> maybe a little costume highlight or something. I don't know. This video is about making the breathe dress from Ever After. If you're new here, uh, I have two other videos on making this project. For a little bit of context, I've been working on this dress for four years. As I just mentioned, I can't shut up about it. And for that, I'm sorry. Um, this is a really big project, really ambitious, but I'm really happy and it's finished. And I'm just talking you through how I made it in case you wanted to make your own or you want to make a similarly complex project and you wanted to some advice on how to do certain things. So. I am really excited to bring you this last uh, video because it has all the pretty little details, but it's also one of the most chaotic in filming, which you'll find out in a second. I got so many DMs about people expecting me to show the whole dress in the previous video and it was just like a glimpse <laughs> and I didn't show all of it because I have some self-restraint and I wanted to do a big reveal in this one. So don't worry, it's coming. It's here. It's, it's this one. Uh, though I'm sure there'll be way more content on Instagram because I mean I spent four years making it so I think that just means I need to post about it for four years now. <laughs> so as I mentioned there's part one which has a little bit of costume analysis, costume research and materials. Um, if you want to know more about the materials I'm using I would go there. I haven't repeated myself because that video has all the info and I didn't want to make this any longer than it needs to be. Uh, part two is making the basic bodice and underskirt. Uh, all the details are on there and I will be putting up the pattern on my Patreon or at least as much of the pattern as I have because obviously some of the things from four years ago have been lost in my several moves across the country. Um, but everything that I do have will be put on there which includes a lot of the embroidery motifs, um, a lot of the bodice and underskirt. I do have the patterns for those. So I'll be putting those on Patreon over the next few months as I scan them and I'm able to digitize them. While the bodice was still easy to handle, I decided to do some of the basic embellishments, which included the main motif. This is one of the first few things I ever bought for this dress. I bought it off eBay um, and this was just pinned into place and hand sewn. And some vintage lace around the neckline, um, which was, I think, perfect for this project. And also the uh, pearl and seed bead motifs around the bodice which were in like a flower formation that was all hand sewn most of the trims on this was hand sewn I didn't know how else to do that so I was just terrified of putting it through the machine at this point <laughs> I then started on the sleeves because these would be easier to attach to the bodice while it didn't have the heavy skirts on it because obviously it's much easier to maneuver under the machine. The sleeves are, like everything is on this dress, super complex. Um, they look very intimidating because they have so many layers of embellishments, but I'm going to break them down for you. I compartmentalized the sleeve into four parts. Um, the upper puff, the fitted top sleeve, the elbow puff, and then the bottom sleeve. <laughs> I For these, I the pattern is super simple. I just roughly measured around my arm and I drew out some trapezoid shapes for them. They're really plain and simple, but that's because the sleeves aren't meant to be super fitted. So this was fine. So the main fabric for the sleeves is different. So there's the top and bottom sleeve, um, the trapezoid shapes, and those are cut out of a plain ivory net tool. The top sleeve has an arched lace motif at the top, uh, followed by a, a different narrow lace, then a silver trim, a golden trim, and then a lace with like flower motifs that has like sequins and pearl beads and all kinds of beading on it. And then it has a scroll motif in like this beautiful silver cord. And then it has the main um, embroidered trim from the dress at the front as well. I already had gathered the laces and, and trims that I needed. There's more information about on the first video again. Um, but the thing I still hadn't done was the scroll motif. And I decided to make that myself um, instead of trying to find something that would work just because pff, that's the theme of this dress, isn't it? I could make it quicker and easier by buying it, but instead I decided to make it myself. I don't know. So I started by sketching it out. Please excuse, I can't really draw, but I used a bunch of like, I used a compass compass to make like the circles and then I kind of sketched it out and then I used a little bit of transfer paper to make sure they were kind of evenish. Then I transferred this to a, a scrap of silver uh, silk organza, um, which matches the embroidered panels on the dress. 
it was just something I had along that was sturdy for it. And I used a combination of silver cord and the DMC metallic thread, but instead of sewing it down, it was couched down to create, a, a, I guess, another different variety of cord. And I then started by layering the um, the lace and the trims on the net uh, and I pinned everything into place until it was nice and I, it looked like how I wanted it to. And then I just hand sewed it down. That's the, t that's the theme, I just hand sewed it all down. A lot of this is going to be like calming shots of me hand sewing down trims and beads. So grab a mug of something, whatever floats your boat and just I'll put on some nice music and let's just take a breath. I feel like I owe you an update because there hasn't been a lot of updates in this costume. I keep filming, I keep sewing and I keep not talking to you so that's gonna be not actually saying what I'm doing. That's gonna be fun for editing cat but it's not today's cat so whatever. Last night I finalized the top sleeve, well almost, the top sleeves. <sighs> These were initially a joy to make I was really excited about them and I spent about 12 hours making these little scroll motifs. Um, there's footage of me doing that, they're just couched down pieces of cord and embroidery floss and then beaded. I was so careful and it looked so beautiful, but I had decided not to do this directly on the net because the net I'd gotten wasn't very strong. And I could see in the original dress that they were also embroidered elsewhere, cut out and applique onto this, whatever trim they came from. I have collected the trims that I needed for these upper layers for ages, like one of the first few things I got was this top place here, that I needed something that had a little gap, I couldn't find one that was quite as high as the one in the original, I might still snip into here maybe, see how that would go. Um, yeah, so the sleeves have a, a crochet lace, well this is polyester uh, crochet type, I don't know what type of lace this is, at the top. And then another band of white lace and then a, a little glimmer of silver ribbon, gold ribbon and then some sort of like really cute um, little sort of flower lace with some um, sequins and some dotted pearls and then this embroidered scroll motif that I thought was really stunning so I definitely wanted to recreate that. So I made all the elements, I put it together in this plain net, I finished the top and the bottom and I added a little bit of stay tape to the top and bottom of it just so it could strengthen it, strengthen it a little bit because again this lace isn't very strong. Um, I finished it all so first the first mistake was that I was in a rush and I was really getting anxious about how much time was running out and I had all these things to do so I thought I would use um, fray check to glue on these motifs as sort of basting and then I could very easily couch over them However, to not get any fray check on my work surface, I put some paper on underneath, which meant that I then had splotches of glue with paper attached to it that I can't quite get out. I tried sort of like easing them out with like tweezers and stuff, but it kept breaking the net and I'd already sewn on all the trims at the top, so I didn't want to break the net. And so they're incredibly messy and it does absolutely break my heart. So 
when I was doing this last night I got really demotivated and that's why there's no speaking footage of me but I was like I'll persevere it'll be fine maybe from a distance or when you've got the undersleeve underneath it won't be as noticeable Ugh, I'm still really unhappy about it um, but I persevered, continued, and then I sewed up the side seams with a really nice French seam, it all looked really nice. Then I tried it on and it didn't freaking fit. I just had to sense it myself there because I did say another word. Um, ugh. So then the solution in my head, at, what, what was it like 11.30pm after working on this for hours, was to seam together some of this top lace and then just add it on to the replace the side seam with a little lace insertion. I just thought that would give me enough enough width but it would also maybe look a little nicer than just slamming on a little bit of um, a little bit of net there because then it would be the bit at the top without the trims and I feel like the lace just kind of fills that in without looking too clunky. So that's what I did. They fit now and I think they have enough ease to fit over the undersleeve. So that's that. My favourite bit was for sure adding these little sequins and little pearls because I really like um, beading in these kind of small details. But yeah, so these are mostly done and what I mean by mostly is that they're still missing the main trim here at the bottom but I'm not going to add that until I actually do it all the way around the neckline because I'm not 100% certain I have enough and that's the priority. I'll figure something else for the sleeves if I have to. <sighs> so I think this just goes to prove that it doesn't really matter how long you plan a project for, things will still go wrong. After that whole debacle, I moved on to the lower part of the fitted sleeve. They are just the same bits of net in like a trapezoid shape. Uh, the tops and bottoms are, are finished with a little bit of stay tape for strength and stability. And then they have these star-like motifs that are appliqued. I decided to make these myself again. Uh, why not? Um, and so I simply I designed out, a, sketched out a bunch of designs. I picked the ones I liked. They're in two sizes, a smaller one and a bigger one. And I experimented it with doing them with a bunch of different sort of embroidery flosses, hand embroidery techniques, gold work techniques, and they just all felt really clunky. So then I actually got an open, to um, what is it called? Free motion embroidery foot for my machine. And I started experimenting with that and I quite liked it. So that's what I went with. And I did these basic shapes onto this cotton gauze that I had from my stash because I thought that once it cut, you cut it out, it would have like this fuzziness around it, which you can see in the original as well because the original was cut and appliqued from something else. So I don't know why that detail really floated my boat, but it did. I could have made it on any fabric, but I decided I really wanted that fuzziness around them to match the original. I don't know the details, you guys. I then added some flat silver metallic ribbon um, and also some golden embroidery onto it just to really give it a bit more dimension and some sequins and, and some seed beads and like just really added more to it to make them a, th a bit more three-dimensional and I think they evoke the original really well. They're obviously not exact replicas but you know I think they worked and I really like them. I then cut them out really carefully and I sewed them onto the nest and then I added a bit more of the silver trims and the beads and all of that. Um, and I even like, I even braided some silver embroidery thread into like this little braid to decorate the, the slit where your arm uh, that is open in the sleeve so that you can get it over your arm. That was just a detail I noticed in the original and I really wanted to replicate it. So I was like braiding this silver cord at 2 a.m. <laughs> some of the decisions on this project are really questionable. <laughs> Once the top and bottom net sleeves were done, I cut out a really basic sort of gathered sleeve head shape out of the crinkle silver fabric I had. I had very, very little left, so I literally used to the last, the last little inch of it. Um, and those were just gathered down into place, and with that the sleeves were kind of done. So it's been a little while since I've filmed you guys, and I'm really sorry, but whenever I... Uh start getting anxious or crunching I the first thing that goes is actually talking to the camera and I've been doing a lot of most of my sewing at like 10 p.m 11 p.m where I'm really not camera suitable but I just wanted to give you an update so the bodice is where it's at it's missing a lot of trims and decorations but those are not going to go on until I've got the skirt on I've been working on the sleeves 
So the problem with the sleeves is that I ran out of fabric and I only had an eh, tiny little amount of this organza and this is just your plain polyester organza. I don't think, I can't remember if I described it in the previous video or not, but I couldn't find anything that was crinkle organza um, that looked nice, number one, two, that it matched the colour, and three, that was in my budget because I'd already spent so much money on all of these trims, I didn't want to spend more on this very fancy fabric. So instead, I bought your cheapest polyester organza that didn't look super, super fake sparkly. It has like a, a sheen and a glimmer to it, but it's not like... It doesn't look super bad is what I think anyway. I did not buy enough because at the time I, I hadn't drafted the skirt so I just had, I think it's three meters or so. Anyway, this is all I could squeeze out for a sleeve. But thankfully, I think from looking at the pictures that these sections of the sleeves um, are, are meant to be see-through. So they're not meant to have the sleeve. So originally I thought there was a full undersleeve underneath and that these were just positioned and tied on but I don't think I think it's a, it, the, the sleeve is made in parts all sewn into one which makes more sense is easier to get on and off so that's exactly what I'm going to do I've just pinned it on at both sides and I'm going to hand sew this to the organza then I'm going to trim behind it do a tiny little rolled hem so it's really neat and then I'm going to use that extra fabric I've got to make a really nice voluminous uh, little poofy bit here then sew on the other bit of the sleeve and I have both to do. Once that's done, the sleeves are done and then I will be basting in the skirt, trying it on. <laughs> Depending on what happens then, I might be crying, I might not, I'll let you know. So let's get these sleeves sorted. And with the sleeves done, it was time to move on to the overskirt. So as I understand it, the overskirt has two elements. One is a crinkle silver fabric that's kind of underneath, and then it has the embroidered silver panels on top. As I mentioned, my crinkle fabric is just as plain polyester organza that I, <laughs> four years ago, that I um, washed and then I twisted it up really tight um, and I secured it with rubber bands and I shoved it into the microwave and dried it in the microwave and then I've kept it rolled up for these four years so it was time to unroll it and actually see if it had worked. <laughs> Results were passable although I would say that if you're trying this uh, get more fabric than you think you'll need because the crinkling of it does actually shrink how much fabric you have to cut out and I had literally like it down to the wire but like it wasn't enough for as much volume as I wanted on the sleeves so I would just recommend get more if you're trying to crinkle your own fabric. I used the embroidered panels as a guide to cut out these, just adding more flare so that it would sit well under it. And then I overlocked all the raw edges. Now I legit have no footage of this because <laughs> I was running out of time, the stakes were high, but basically I just assembled all of these cut panels um, by sewing the side seams and all the edges were finished with the overlocker um, and it was basically just an overskirt that was open at the front and also with a slight gap at the back so that it, I could get the dress on and off. Then I just placed it on the dress form over the crepe back satin skirt into place until it was nicely arranged. And I then added the embroidered panels on top of that. So let's talk about these embroidered panels. Well, they deserve their own moment. This is basically what took me four years to complete. I talk about it a bit more in the first part of this, uh, this series, but to recap, I couldn't find any suitable fabric. I thought this was a really emblematic um, part of the dress and so I just decided to recreate it. So back in 2019 I started embroidering this and I embroidered the first panel every night for like four hours consistently for three weeks and then I re that's when I realized this project is not going to be done when I wanted it to be done. And so I've been working on these on the background sort of roughly once a week for two hours every week since. Um, so they took a really long time. But my technique for this is basically, and it's evolved over the years, by the way, I started by doing a chain stitch, then I evolved into a tambour hook and like it's changed. But basically I was using DMC metallic thread um, on this framed piece of the silver silk organza that I've then interfaced or used embroidery stabilizer in the later versions because that makes this make, makes it so much easier. Um, and then the outline is just done with a tambour hook and then the little stems are done with a chain stitch and then the little pearls are added individually. 
it takes a really long time. But yeah, so basically they're all, there's six panels, they're all embroidered by hand. This took her ages. Do it or don't do it. I don't, it, it, it took a long time. I finished the last panel in January 2023, um, just from working at my own pace. And so I, I, because it was just coming up to four years that I'd started the project, I thought it was time to finish it. And then I found out that it coincided with the 25th year anniversary of the film. So it was like everything was aligning. So then I really pushed to get this dress done um, before May because I really wanted to wear it to a convention. So I think it all aligned and yeah, it was meant to be. It was meant to be this year. But they were finally done. So then I added them to the skirts. Everything was basted together at the waist. And then I basted it onto the bodice and sewed it together by machine in what have what is most likely the most stressful 10 minutes of my life at that sewing machine. <laughs> by some miracle, it worked out. And now all I had to do was add a few last trims, um, which I did all by hand. I just pinned them into place and then I just sort of hand sew them down hours and hours and hours. You know the drill. And that's it. I think in the future I might add some more beading because you can never have enough and I think every time I look at a different photo of this dress I find a new new beads new new details everywhere so I think I'll be adding more to it over the years but it's done overall I'm just so happy with this dress um I think it's a great display of all the work and effort that went into it I feel amazing in it it catches the light beautifully it's so shiny <laughs> I just love it. I think obviously there are things that I would like to improve, such as the fit on the sleeves. Um, I need to add some cords so that they don't fall down. And I need to, um, I think the fit on the bodice could have been a bit better, but because it was so, it's, it's so um, heavily trimmed that it doesn't have any flexibility to it at the front anymore. So it gives you quite a flat chest at the front, but it is what it is. I wanted to add trims so I can live with that. As I said, I'll be putting all the bits that I can of passion over Patreon and I already have a get ready with me video over there of how I did my hair and makeup. If you're interested in that, check it out. Otherwise, I think it's time for the reveal. So I will see you all very soon with a different video, but for now, enjoy the breathe dress.